Now, why is it Dana Bash's job to try to defend the Harris Walsh campaign here? I mean, she crashed and burned when she tried to debate J.D. Vance over the weekend, and this was... Here's the thing. I'm trying to keep a straight face here. Uh, we've not spoken about Laura Ingleheim or anything she's had to say or been up to for a while for a simple reason. It's like, let's face it, who really enjoys uh, putting their head down a toilet bowl before you flushed it? But that's the equivalent of what you get if you watch Fox News. Would you like to do a coin flip? We don't have a coin. Cashless society, all that stuff. But heads JD Vance, tells Laura Ingleheim. Uh, it comes up with the same pile of nonsense. Can you believe? Can you believe? Can you believe? These words were actually said by buffoons today. And we're still no near to SNL starting. Well, well Congressman, do you think Kamala's uh, issued statement where she said there's no place for violence in America or she's glad Donald Trump's safe, was that, was that sufficient? No. What she should do is go through all the ad campaign that they're running in the battleground states. Anything that references destruct, being destructive of democracy and all the other tropes and the lies, Project 2025, all that stuff, it should come down. Stick to the facts, stick to the policy. But you can't do... But I do think that we should take this opportunity to call for a reduction in the ridiculous and inflammatory political rhetoric coming from too many corners of our politics. Look, we can disagree with one another, we can debate one another, but we cannot tell the American people that one candidate is a fascist and if he's elected it is going to be the end of American democracy. We cannot, as a, per as a person affiliated with Kamala Harris has said, that we need to quote, eliminate Donald J. Trump. A New York Democratic congressman has said that in the past. If you tell the American people that this person is the end of democracy, if you tell the American people that this person needs to be eliminated, most of them, thank God, are going to ignore you, but some crazy person is going to take matters into their own hands and actually listen to the crazy rhetoric that you're putting out there. I was thinking about this today. If Harris and Biden really want to end the conspiracy theories and bring the country together, all this unity stuff, well, Harris needs to make a much more vigorous stance here. And you know what would speak volumes? Why not invite former President Trump to the White House? So you do realize what they're really saying. Do not campaign against the former losing president of the United States of America, because if you tell the truth, if you put any facts out there, if you let people know what's really going on, what the, uh, the former administration wants to do with Project 25, etc. If you compare some of his nut jobs to, wow, uh, those who were running Germany during the 1930s, you're to blame. So he wants the Democrats just to say nothing and to let uh, the Republicans carry on spewing out garbage, noise, lies, or in this particular Trumpy Trump, straightforward racism. We've not manipulated this, by the way. This is not AI. This is what the guy said to Megyn Kelly. Listen carefully. Yep, you're not being deceived. Only found two Springfield residents calling to complain about Haitian migr uh, migrants taking geese from ponds. Warnings of calls, and they've only found two Springfield residents calling to complain about Haitian migr uh, migrants taking geese. From Kamala Harris is the first major party nominee in American history who fundamentally rejects freedom and embraces Marxism, communism, and fascism. You're learning about this. You'll find out nobody knew who she was. We are motivated, in other words, by living our faith and ensuring that our public policy promotes the common good. And I think that at this moment in time, in 2024, with all the violence and all the negative political rhetoric, we need to remember above and beyond that we must love our neighbors, that we must treat other people as we hope to be treated, and that we must love our God and let it motivate us in how we enact public policy and how we live our faith and how we govern our nation. And that will make America a more prosperous and a healthier and a more sane and most importantly, a better nation, a nation. What's that guy's name? 
Uncle Donaldson, Uncle Thomas, whatever his name is. Uh, there's a, sev- sev- a serious side to all of this, because while Fox are playing the political, can we score some uh, points out of this by uh, marinating the truth, which is what they're doing, there are some serious questions which need to be asked. Uh, Ari Malbu is coming up, and there is something that I think, uh, if you had any level of journalistic integrity... Probably not so that Laura Ingram understands. You'd want to know is, how was this particular individual able to be around the golf course, for starters, yeah? Uh, and how did he know that Trump was likely to be there that day? Because it wasn't, wasn't widely circulated amongst the mal staff, as far as I know, uh, that he was going to be playing golf that day. Which leads you to suspect... There's more to this whole story, right? Not conspiracy theory. Listen to Ari Malba. America, we resolve our difference peacefully. The ballot box, not at the end of a gun. America suffered too many times the tragedy of an assassin's bullet. It solves nothing and just tears the country apart. We must do everything we can to prevent it and never give it any oxygen. That was the president's remarks. We also have a report that President Biden and former President Trump did speak. They connected by phone today. So what you have there are the traditional calls for peace, for nonviolence, calm, and for following the facts. The suspect's apparent target, former President Trump, also went beyond thanking the agents, which I mentioned to you in our report, to also publicizing misleading and unproven statements about this incident and using a political lens to invoke this and his speculation or falsehoods about it within the political context of his political debates or campaign. I am not reading that part of Donald Trump's statement because it is unproven and speculative. It doesn't meet news fact-checking standards, no matter who it happens to come from, even as, of course, everyone from the president on down is very thankful that no harm was done and wish former President Trump well. Separately, A very powerful Trump ally, Elon Musk, posted a question on his platform X about the hypothetical assassination attempts towards other officials. He then retracted that, the inflammatory post, which came within a day of this incident and in this season of heightened concern about political violence, even drew a specific rebuke from the White House, which warned it was irresponsible. And the Secret Service is planning to conduct an internal review about this incident. Officials are searching the suspect's properties and electronics for more information that might create a fuller picture about both how this happened, who, if anyone else, was involved. They always look at that. Right now, it has not been connected to anyone else, but they're going to go through everything. And how this individual might have had information or reasoned his way towards what was not an announced event. Was he lucky just going to a golf course? Or did he have some way to figure out that Donald Trump, his intended target, apparently was going to be there. Those are a lot of the questions here in the early period of this. NBC's Jesse Kirsch has been reporting on this. He's live outside Trump's West Palm Beach Golf Club. Uh, What else can you tell us on the ground? Yeah, so Ari, I want to show the viewers exactly what the scene is like over here. So this is the entrance to the golf club right behind me, and I'm going to have our photographer Andy back up a little bit, give you a sense. These are the bushes that line the outskirts of the golf club, and you can see they're they're quite thick. We can't see into the golf course from over here. They're probably at least 10 feet high, and these are the kinds of bushes that line this golf course for much of the property line, and so this is the kind of Uh, area that this person would have been going through uh, to have a a line of sight on the golf course. And as you mentioned, he did not have line of sight on the former president of the United States, according to authorities who briefed us a short time ago. We've also learned that the Trump campaign today, you mentioned uh, the questions around Secret Service staffing and support and how that might need to change. The Trump campaign has asked the Secret Service for more resources, according to our reporting from earlier today. We also know uh, from officials, and we had learned this yesterday, as we continue getting more information about how this all unfolded, you mentioned 12 hours that the suspect was uh, allegedly casing the area, if you will. Uh, His cell phone data showed him in this area for around 12 hours before the actual incident with the Secret Service. According to officials, Secret Service personnel always goes a whole ahead of the former president to survey the area in front of him, and that's the agent that spotted the barrel of a gun and fired shots at this suspect who we now know uh, is at the center of an apparent second assassination attempt. We've also learned more about the suspect who made his first court appearance today. Uh, He has a lengthy criminal history going back more than two decades and he was apparently at one point smiling. What is it 
Dana Bash's job to try to defend the Harris Walls campaign here. I mean, she crashed and burned when she tried to debate JD Vance over the weekend, and policy. this was. But if you're going to interrupt me every single time that I open my mouth, then why am I even doing this? So please ask a question, and I'd ask you to be polite enough to yes. let me answer it. Yes, I I am, and I think that uh, if Kamala Harris and Tim Walls were making unsubstantiated claims that had racist undertones about. Uh, people eating dogs and cats, I would, and they didn't answer the questions about that, then I would have similar uh, interactions with them. As you know, I, I am very grateful that you come on the show, as I am for other Republicans, but this is something that I, you're hearing from constituents. I did a lot of reporting. I talked to people in Ohio over the weekend, and they're really worried about these claims. The policies, yes, I am. The American media totally ignored this stuff until Donald Trump and I started talking about cat memes. If I have to, but it if wasn't I just have a to meme, create right. stories so that the American media actually pays attention to the suffering of the American people, then that's what I'm going to do, Dana, because you guys are completely letting Kamala Harris coast. You had one interview with her. You talk about pushing back against me, Dana. You didn't push back against the fact that she cast the deciding vote on the Inflation Reduction Act, which is why a lot of Americans can't afford food and housing. You just said we that you're be creating about a story. Public policy. Sorry, you just said that you're creating the story. What's that, Dana? I, you just said that this is a story that you yes. created. So, so the the eating dogs and we cats are thing is we, not. We are accurate. creating. We are. Dana, it comes from firsthand accounts from my constituents. I say that we're creating a story, meaning we're creating the American media focusing on it. I didn't create 20,000 illegal migrants coming into Springfield thanks to Kamala Harris's policies. Her policies did that, but yes, we created the actual focus that allowed the American media to talk about this story and the suffering caused by Kamala Harris's policies. Do you, just once and for all, you again started this in part by saying that at which Donald Trump repeated on the debate stage that and he didn't say anything about the policies that you're talking about he just said Haitians are eating dogs and cats can you affirmatively say now that that is a rumor that has no base basis with evidence Dana, the evidence is the first-hand account of my constituents who are telling me that this happened. And by the way, I've been trying to talk about the problems in Springfield for months, and the American media ignored it. There was a congressional hearing just last week of angel moms who lost children because Kamala Harris let criminal migrants into this country who then murdered their children. The American media totally ignored this stuff until Donald Trump and I started talking about cat memes. If I have to, but it if wasn't I just have a to meme, create right? stories so that the American media actually pays attention to the suffering of the American people, then that's what I'm going to do, Dana, because you guys are completely letting Kamala Harris coast. You had one interview with her. You talk about pushing back against me, Dana. You didn't push back against the fact that she cast the deciding vote on the Inflation Reduction Act, which is why a lot of Americans can't afford food and housing. You just said we that you're creating a story. We ought to be talking about public policy. Sir, you just said that you're creating the story. What's that, Dana? You just said that this is a story that you've yes. created. So, so the, the eating dogs we and are cats thing is we, not We are accurate. creating, we are, Dana, it comes from firsthand accounts from my constituents. I say that we're creating a story, meaning we're creating the American media focusing on it. I didn't create 20,000 illegal migrants coming into Springfield thanks to Kamala Harris's policies. Her policies did that, but yes, we created the actual focus that allowed the American media to talk about this story and the suffering caused by Kamala Harris's policies. You Today, Trump arguing the suspect, quote, believe the rhetoric of Biden and Harris, and he acted on it. Comments echoing last week's debate. I probably took a bullet to the head because of the things that they say about me. They talk about democracy. I'm a threat to democracy. Trump has also used incendiary language against Democrats, and authorities have not yet revealed a motive in either incident. Vice President Harris condemned political violence, writing, quote, I am thankful that former President Trump is safe. And this today from President Biden. In America, we resolve our differences peacefully at the ballot box, not at the end of a gun.